Hey friends, welcome back to the Krusty Cranks, where we paint lures and make baits and do all that fun stuff. Um, I get asked a lot in emails and uh, comments and stuff how I make my stencils. Okay, and uh, so I thought what I would do is I would do a little tutorial video, and it's probably be a little a little long because it takes a few minutes to get through everything. Um, so I hope you stick by and. Uh, Watch the watch all the video, get all the tips, and um, learn how I make my stencils here. And um, I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. I'm almost up to 500 subscribers. It's amazing. I didn't think I would be there this quick. Um, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and give us a like on this video if you thought it was good for you. Um, if you learned something from it, maybe pick up a new technique for your lure painting business. Or if you're just a professional home bait maker, this should help you out too. Um, so let's get on with the video. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're trying to get to that 500 so we can use our community board. Um, so I'm close, real close. So I'd appreciate it if you give us a subscribe. And uh, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. So let's get on with making the stencils. <music> folks the program that I use is called Adobe Illustrator um, it's a part of the Adobe Photoshop package the uh, creative cloud package and um, since I work in digital publishing I use these applications all the time now I'm not sure if there is a free program out there that you can use um, but you need a vector building program so you can make vectors okay um, and that's what that's what I cut the stencils from is a vector file okay it's actually a SVG um, so um, what I did here was I scanned in my lure and I got these new top water um, 3.75 top waters in don't have no stencils for them yet and basically for every size lure that I have I scan it in and make a make a placement file just like this and what you're seeing right here this little top water file and I place it in there and over here we use layers okay so these are all the the stencils that I started to work on I'm gonna do a bass on this one and um, I wanted to make some new stencils to size up for this for the bass on this one so um, this is my layer one that's my that's my building layer so I usually lock that layer um, and if you find another vector program that you can use or the free vector program, you know, they're all should have these same capabilities. It'll just be maybe little different menus or whatever, or you can get the, the Adobe Illustrator. Um, now what I do is, um, I create these patterns and actually let me zoom in on this. So we got a little better view. And then what I do is I size these patterns to my bait sizes. And this one I've already kind of played around with just so I'd have something to um, show you guys to how I started up. So what I'm thinking is that this is going to be my, this will be my actual stencil, what you see here in black. Okay. Um, everything is created with these little vectors. Okay. They're just little little blobs or sections or little drawing drawn elements um, just like that and I can scale one of them two of them whatever I can also scale the whole thing if I wanna select this and just scale it all the way up I can size it I can make it longer I can do pretty much whatever I want to do so what I usually do is I try to size these up so they they work on the bait um, that I'm doing and I have all my baits that I paint, all the different sizes, lipless, top waters, crank baits, 2.5s, 1.5s, 
little wake baits, everything. I create a file with all my layers, with all my stencils in there, all my templates. Okay, so if I want to view a different one, I can view this one. Okay, and you can see this one's too big. So I'll just make a selection of it and I'll size it down to where I want it and make it fit on this bait. If I need to rotate it a little bit, I can rotate it. And if I want to move individual elements of the bait, I can move specific elements. Okay, so the beauty of doing it this way is that I can create the same stencil over and over and over again, and it'll be exactly the same every time. And now the nice thing is, too, is that with having each one of these little elements here, I can move them around and make them fit, and I'll bring you way in so you can see what we got here. Okay, I can move these around because they're basically just little points. Now, I'm not going to give you a full Illustrator lesson in this um, there's tons of videos on YouTube on how to use Illustrator but basically these are just little drawn segments with little points on them and I can move them individually so say I want to space this out some more I can select these and I can move these space them out a little more I can pretty much put them anywhere I want. If I want to copy one, I can just duplicate it. By holding down my option key. And now I got a diff another one. So sometimes when I need things, I'll draw a couple of them. And then I'll space them out and I'll reshape them um, but basically these little points right here is what builds this little solid spot right here okay let me show you if I take my pen tool and I do draw these I can create pretty much anything okay um, I can make them curve I can change the points of them if I want it to be rounded. I can put little curvatures on them. I can change them. I can make them in pretty much any shape I want. Now a lot of times what I'll do is I'll find something and I'll bring a JPEG of it in and then I will trace it with this pen tool. So basically going around and creating all these little points. So that's pretty much how I make all my my stencils layouts. Um, and I do that, like I said, for every bait size I have. Um, I will duplicate all the, the stencils that I got made up, and I, which is a lot. And I will size them up. And make them fit each particular lure size. So when I scan it in, I scan it in at 100%, which means it's the exact scale of what the lure is. And then I create these. And this way I can make my stencils fit my lure. Even if it's this goes on a 1.5 lipless to a to a 5 inch or a 60 inch lure I can make it whatever size and the quality of it is going to be the same because these are vectors so they're not going to be all jagged like if I was to scan something in and blow it up it's not going to be all jagged the edges are always going to be smooth so it gives me a nice sharp stencil detail okay um so let me zoom back out and show you because I wanted to create a bass popper for this new lure is going to be my first 
basically my first paint on these new lures. So I wanted to create a, some different stencils um, that I can use. So I've been playing around with some different stuff. And I haven't got all these to fit yet, but we'll pick one and we'll actually make a... So there's this one is built in pieces. Okay, so I've got these pieces and I've got these pieces of the stencil. Okay, so I can, like I said, I can move these around and I can make them fit whatever size stencil or whatever size lure that I'm using. I can rotate it a little bit, make it angle, whatever I want to want to do with it. And when I first started painting baits, I was like trying to hand cut stencils and all that and cardboard and tape. I've done all that everybody else is doing. And I even bought the dental thing that melts the plastic around the lure. I've done all those. Um, tried cutting them with a with a wood burner tool. I mean, it was just all a lot of work. And this I found to be the easiest, most effective, best stencils I can create. If I want to create a mask, I can create a mask. If I want to create you know take something and scale it and size it or whatever make it fit I can do that um, the other thing I do is before I print out my stencil I always make an eye spot Oops, I thought I had a rectangle tool but this is basically just a drawing program so I can make my eye spot exactly the size of my lure and then that helps me I use that eye spot to help me line up the stencil gets me gets me close it gets me close so if I want to do fins if I want to do the gill lines I can create a stencil here I can create little spots on his gill cheeks so we'll, you'll see me doing a lot more of that detail work as we get into it most of my videos were for beginners um, so I didn't really spend a lot of time on um, doing a lot of detail work I was kind of saving that um, but the stencils I think is a big plus for anybody that's really wants to be serious serious about paint baits especially if you're if you're painting baits to to sell um, because you know the time I spend in making a stencil is minimal to what some people spend and when you're trying to make money off of making whoop, nice thing is I can always go back and undo it when you're trying to make money on baits and you want to produce the best looking baits you can produce these stencils are probably the best option for you um, it's a little expensive to get going because you gotta buy a cricket um, I was involved in, in pretty much the printing industry for about 35 almost 40 years so um, I was already used to working with all these programs and I had a big sign cutter too I have one that cuts a 48 inch piece of film and I can cut all these on a 48 inch piece of film if I had to but the the Cricut is um, probably by far the best for the small for the small uh, lures because you don't waste so much material 
and you can cut something down to three, two inches even. Um, I usually cut to uh, uh, I usually cut to a uh, six by six piece, and I can usually get about three stencils laid out on there. Um, so basically, what I do is I just build all these layers on my lure. And I get everything sized up to fit that lure, all my stencils, and get them all in exact position. And I always paste an eye on it to help me line it up. And after a while, you can build up an enormous amount of stencils. And it takes me about, well, you'll see how long it takes me to cut one out. Um, now, when you get to picking these little spots out of here, you know, that does take a few minutes. But you've got a perfectly cut stencil, and it's you can use it over and over again. And usually I, oop, I didn't want to do that. Usually I can... Um, you know, get five or six, ten baits out of it. I don't know. I'm still using ones um, that I haven't had to recut any new ones yet. Um, so you can get a bunch of uses out of them if you keep them clean and stick them back on the paper when you're done with them. Um, but to me, this this after experimenting with all the different ways to make stencils, this turned out to be the most cost effective for me um, you know some people just might not want to get into this technology part of it or not have the experience it's not that hard really once you play around with it like I said there's tons of YouTube videos that tells how to do it how to create stuff in Illustrator and draw and you're draw and drawing certain drawing programs Again, I'm not sure if there's a free one out there. Um, if there is, maybe I could post a link to it. Um, but you definitely need that to, to draw and create your own stencils. Um, once I have little elements like these little spots, I can copy these. And I can take this little spot right here. I can take all these little spots right here and turn them into that pumpkin seed stencil that I that I made um, if you go back and watch my pumpkin seed video that's pretty much how I did it I created all these little spots and just copied and pasted them duplicated them and put them all over and made them look made them you know look like look like they look now um, so that's you know people ask me why I give them Will I make them stencils and will I sell them my stencils and things like that? And I really don't want to be in that business of making and cutting stencils for people. Um, just because I've got so many other things that I want to do with the bait painting and lure making that I'm not really interested in making stencils. And that's why I thought I would do this video to help you out and show you how I make my stencils. And then you can make your own stencils. Because really, you don't want to buy stencils from me. You don't want to buy stencils. You want to be able to make your own stencils. So that way, just like this, you can size them up for whatever whatever baits you have. Or whatever new baits that come out or whatever. You can scan that bait in there. Take these ones you already got made. Save a file out. Make a new file. And paste all them in there. And just resize them up to the bait to fit and then you can have the stencil that will fit every bait you have um, it took me a lot of time I've had a, I've got a lot of time involved in making these stencil layouts and I'm not really interested in giving that time up for free or making stencils for people um, so you can make them on your own and you can learn how to do it. It's not. It's not too bad. Um, so let's get to the point where we're gonna save this thing out and get it ready for the cricket. 
All right, so I think I'm going to go with uh, all these I'm playing around with still because I want to size them up for this bait, but let's see which one we're going to go with. I kind of like this one so far has been my favorite one. I kind of like that one. Um, and I was thinking that I could use this as a mask and actually put it over top of one of my other little stencils and kind of shade that back a little bit. There's so much you can do with it. Um, but I think I like them all really, so it's hard to pick out which one. I like that one for bass. Um, we might as well go with this one because... I think that's the one I'm going to do, and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so I've got my uh, I've got my stencil all done. This is what, what I want to do. I want to print this out, cut this out, and make a stencil out of it. All right, so got the eyeball in there. Always put the eyeball in. It helps me line it up. Um, this looks like it fits on the lure pretty good. Here's my edges of my lure, and I can still move it a little bit if I need to. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's cut this one out. All right. So, um, next thing I want to do is I want to turn off my layer that has my bait on it because that's the only thing I want to cut out. All right. And let me zoom back out on this for a minute. Zoom out. Zoom out. All right. So that's my stencil right there. That's what we're going to have. All right, so and then I go up to my file, and I do, uh, first I want to save this, because I don't want to lose it, what I've done already. All right, now I want to save, I'm sorry, I want to export as, and it's going to come up here. And I want to change this to SVG. I want a SVG file. And you can see up there. So I'm going to create this one is going to be called Bass 1. So Topwater Bass 1. All right, because I do have a bunch of them. And I'm going to do them all and see which ones I like the best. Not on this video, but this is the one we're going to do, Bass 1. So, SVG file. Save it as a SVG file. And export it. And it's going to ask me a couple options over here. I just use the default options. Um, and I say OK. And I'm pretty much done with this. All right, next thing I want to do is open up my Cricut and my little Cricut design space thing is here. And it'll open up here in a minute. I'm going to stop recording till it gets open and then I'll start recording again. Okay, so here we are inside Create uh, Cricut Design Space. And um, here's some of the ones I've already already made stencils of. Um, this was a custom order I did for a customer. He wanted his logo on there. Um, these are some of the ones that I've been working on and some of the ones that you'll be seeing on upcoming bait. But let's uh, get the one in there we were working on. All right, so um, first thing I want to do is to upload my image. Okay, so I'm going to upload. And I'm going to find my image, my SVG file. Now you can do P PNGs, JPEGs, GIFs all other kinds of files in here um, but I found by using those they kind of they kind of look jagged and the resolution isn't as good as if you create a SVG file or a vector file um, so here 
remembering where you put it is always an important thing. Um, but all mine, I've, I've got everything all organized here and my stencil layouts. And I'll go to my top water. Two, three, seven, five. So you can see how many folders and stencils I've been working on. Um, so here's my 3.75 top water. And there's my Bass 1 SVG. So that's the file I want to bring in. And I've still got my template file right here that I built all my templates in. So I saved that so I can always go back. And if I need to print another one of these, if it's uploaded, I can still use it. Um, so we're going to open that. And it's going to take a minute to bring it in. And there it is. Okay. So that's the cut image that I want to use. All right. Um, so I'm going to upload that. And there it is. All right. So now I want to create a new canvas. And this represents the board. And you'll see that in a minute. Um, my board on mine cuts a 12. I can cut 12 by 12 inches. It's a 12 by 12 inch square. Um, when I cut my material, and I'll show you that when we start to peel it, I'll show you the roll and the type of material I use. I use a temporary vinyl, signed vinyl. Actually, I can I use a few different things. I use a mylar, a uh, seven mil mylar that I can cut. Same thing that I'm cutting right now, I can cut on a mylar. Um, but I use a piece of material that's six by six. Okay, so I know that I got a six by six area here that I can um, fit stuff into. So when I cut my material, because it's on a 12 inch roll, um, instead of doing all full 12 inches, I can get two pieces out of here. I don't, if I was going to cut a whole full sheet of, I can place them all on here. Um, but I just like to do a couple at a time and, and, um, that way I don't waste material and if I have a problem with it, it's no big deal. I can just cut another little piece and, and throw it on there. Um, so I'm going to go to my files that I have uploaded. And I'm going to select that one and I'm going to bring it in. And there it is. Okay. And it's exactly the size that I made it. And it looks small on here just because of the screen view. But we can zoom in on it a little bit. And you can see that there it is. All right. Now, over here, you got all these little pieces. So the first thing I have to do is weld all these little pieces into one. All right. So they're already selected because when you bring them in and you select this, this shows you that they're all selected all right so the first thing you want to do is weld all these together so by hitting the weld button if everything works out right yep it welds it down to one piece if I was to try to send that now it would take each little piece and want to cut that separately so I don't want to do that I want to cut all these as a whole as one piece all right, so now when I select them, they're all together as one piece. Okay, I can move the whole thing. All right, so what you need is you need two stencils because you need one for each size side. If I cut this out and only have one, I don't have nothing when I flip it over. All right, so what I want to do is I want to duplicate this, go up to here and duplicate it. And it makes another copy of it. And I'm going to drag it over here. Keeping it in my six inches. I got plenty of room. So if you got room, leave space around so you, you can use that to mask off your bait. And you won't have to spray. You, you only get this. And when you spray, you'll only go through here. And of course the eye, but we cover that up usually. All right. So now I got two of them. What I want to do is line these up so they're both about in the same position. And then I'm going to go up here and I want to flip this one horizontally. 
now I have one for that front one side and then I have it flipped over for the other side okay so if I click off of it you can see I got two stencils now all right so since I have a six inch piece all right I can do one of two things I can and you you want to what make sure you weld it together first because you don't want to have all these little pieces that you'll have to be trying to grab a hold of weld it together and then if you look over here we got two welds alright so we're gonna select them select them both and we're gonna weld them together these are very important little techniques here guys that I'm showing you because it took me quite a while to figure out what I was doing wrong when they all kept coming in in little pieces so if you have to and you got one of these and you want to learn how to do it and you go back and rewatch this video until you get these techniques in order because you have to do them in this order alright so now I got these two um, let's bring in another one that I've already got uploaded here let's do uh, let's do this this is a new tiger pattern I created um, yeah, let's do this one. And we'll paint one of these at some later date. I've got another crawl pattern here. Um, I can do that one. I got this crawl pattern. You guys already seen that one. That's a video for the, um, the red crawl that I did. Um, but we'll bring in this one, this new tiger stripe one. So I'm going to add that to canvas. And this is actually for a 2.5 uh, square bill. So it just shows you that you can add all these together and cut out whatever. If you got different size baits, you can cut them all out. Okay. Here again, I'm going to repeat my steps. Okay. So over here when it's grayed out like that, that means they're all selected. Right now you can see there's a box around them they're all selected alright but you have to weld them together to one piece now I have that one as one piece I'm gonna duplicate it I'm gonna move it over here and this is another reason why I like the eyeball because I can tell that I've got going the right direction so I always put that little eye spot on there. It helps me in many ways. All right. Then I'm going to flip it horizontally. And now I got four stencils. All right. I've got room to put probably four more stencils on there. But I'm not going to for the video purposes. Because um, I can always cut, flip it around and... and cut one out on this little piece or cut it out when I cut it alright so here we go next thing we're gonna do is weld these two together we're gonna weld them okay now we want to select them all and weld them together so basically it's just grouping everything. It's like a group. So it groups everything together as one piece. All right. We're ready to go. Okay. I'm going to... Um, mine is a maker. It's a Cricut maker. Um, so it's already selected up here. When you first get one, you'll have to set that up. Once you got it all set up. Once all the stuff is set up, guys, it's it makes it a breeze to make stencils I'm telling you it's it's the best way to make them I'm telling you if you got the money to buy it and invest in it you know it's it's just the creativity that you can create with your baits and your lures is just amazing and so much easier and if I ever need another one of these I don't have to cut another index card or piece of tape or anything like that I just go back pull in my image again recut me a new stencil and you'll see how quick it takes to cut these four stencils out. Alright, so we're all laid out here. we got four pieces on. 
I'm going to bring up the camera over here so you can see what goes on next. Um, let me bring the camera up. There it is. There's my Cricut. Here's my black. There's my black piece 6x6 six six on the board. And it's an adhesive board. It comes with the, um, you have to buy them. Actually, if you buy a package, it comes with them. But um, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby. The boards, they're like, I don't know, 10 or 15 bucks. But they you can cut a lot of stuff on them. Um, so, next thing is we're ready to cut this thing. So, I'm going to go up here to the Make It button. And I click Make It. And it's going to sort my projects into mats by color, which it's all black, so it's all going to put it on one color. Now, if you do opposite colors, like say you want to do two color spots on a frog, I'm going to be doing one of those. I'll actually might even do a video for the two color just so you can see how to overlay the two colors. But basically, you're going to create two sets of stencils that will all register and line up together. Um, so you can't hardly see it very well, but it's on there. It's black on my board up here um, so next we got a few things to do to set it up we're only wanting one copy of it but if we wanted to cut five or six copies we just put five copies up there and we cut this thing five times if we wanted to the red lines indicate your cutting area so since I've got a six by six and I've got plenty of room I can move this down a little bit and it'll leave me a little more space around my stencils. Um, that way I can have a little bit of a mask when I paint. Um, okay, so we're ready to go. Next thing you want to do is hit continue. And it's going to say no device found for a minute. And it's looking up. Mine's on Bluetooth, which is nice because I can set this thing anywhere in the room and cut stencils. Um, but I've got it set up over here by the computer. All right. So these are all the things, different things you can cut with it. Um, you can even cut wood, basswood. I've got some basswood um, strips that I cut uh, lure blanks patterns out of. So then when I want to draw out some lure blank patterns, I just lay that little basswood thing on there, draw it out, and then I can cut it out on the bandsaw. Um, stencil film, mylar light card stock I cut my own I do my own cards that go inside my boxes with my baits I print them and then cut them out with rounded corners okay so we got um, we got all these options what we're going to select is um, vinyl we're going to cut with the vinyl now um, if you decide to get some vinyl to do this Make sure you get the temporary vinyl. Don't get the uh, Cricut brand because it will peel the paint off your lures. Um, okay, so base material set the vinyl. Load tools and materials. We already got that ready to go. We just got to push the button. And it feeds it in. It's going to give us one more chance to make to start cutting push the button and it's going to start cutting
gives you a good uh, percentage screen just letting you know just how far along you are. <clears throat> it goes pretty quick considering the little dots and little spaces it's got to cut out of there it goes pretty quick. Once you get everything set it's, it's just a piece of cake to make stencils. I've been pretty lucky I haven't had any problems I'm still on the same cutting blade and I've cut tons and stencils off I've cut mylar stencils I'll show you those when we get over to the table um, probably the biggest pain is peeling out the little little holes and stuff um, especially if you cut mylar um, stencils because it leaves that on your cutting board on your adhesive and it gets to be a pain picking those off but like I said, once you got it done, once you got it cut, you got a stencil you can use over and over and over again. And if something happens to that stencil, it gets worn out, don't have sticky anymore, you know, the adhesive starts coming off of it, it's no big deal. Just throw it away and, and just cut another one. All right? So we're all done. That's all it took to cut that out. Um, and I actually, normally I go even a lot faster, but because I'm recording the video, I'm trying to make sure I get all the steps in there for you. Um, so that's it. Stencil's done. Um, we're going to unload the material and we'll go over to the paint booth and, and weed it out. I'm just going to hit done. It'll eject the board out for me. Brings me back to here. All right. And um, if we want to save this, we can. We've already uploaded our file, so it's no big deal. But since we had to do all the welding and everything, um, I always like to save them, um, save my projects. And I'll just cut this, call this uh, 3.75. Whoop. 3.75 top water. Bass one, and I got the Bengal, the tiger stripes on there, Bengal tiger stripes. So save that, and if I want to go back to cut that again, I can do that. I can set my own uh, collections up. Um, it's pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, like I said, it's a little expensive to get started, um, but you know, just tell the wife that. She can do craft stuff on it too, and um, she, she, maybe you can talk her into it. Or if you're one of the ladies, you should understand, and you could probably uh, get yourself one of these and talk the husband into doing the cutting for you. All right, so here we go. Um, I'll take you over to the ba the paint painting table, and we'll weed this weed this out. Okay, here's the mat, and um, here's my little 6x6 six six piece that I got on there. So you can see it's tacky on there. Um, I'm going to set that to the side. And it has a mylar sheet that just keeps the dirt from getting on it and everything. So once you use it, you can see this one's dirty. But it's still working, it's still sticky. And if I need a new one, I just run over Hobby Lobby pick up another one for 10 bucks or so. No big deal. And I use the light grip. There's a few different ones. There's strong grip, light grip. There's one for fabric. I use the light grip for this, for the vinyl and the mylar. Um, earlier I was telling you, you can cut mylar stencils. Um, if you like the mylar ones, look. I cut all these out before I started using the, the, the film. But there they all are. You can cut them out of mylar if you like. To use the mylar, they, they tend to hold up more for a longer period of time. I've used them. Um, there's a the fire tiger. Now, the mylar ones, you only got to cut one because you can flip it over and use the other side. So, um, that's one good thing about the mylar. It's just a 7 mil mylar. You can buy it on Amazon. Um, cut fins. You can cut ears. You can cut whatever you want to cut. You can do one at a time if you're doing stripes, whatever you want to do. If you want to make a make a mask, um, here's all the ones I've been using. 
cut. I got a bunch cut here that I haven't even used yet. You'll be seeing coming up in videos. It's just really affordable um, to, to make stencils and just use over and over again. I keep them all in little cardstock packets by size. Um, that way I know what, what to look for. Um, here's the one I was telling you, the pumpkin seed. I've used this one probably about, I'm going to say I've used this about 20 baits now. Um, so this one's about time. Um, they, you got to be careful with the heat gun. When you're drying your baits, you put these on there, be careful. Um, you don't want to get too much heat because they will start buckling up on you and stuff because it is vinyl. And, um, and the adhesive could come off on it, on your bait. So just be careful. Just do it on low. Do your heat on low or just air dry it with your gun. Okay. Here's my piece. Um, this is the stuff I use. It's called Oracle, Oracle 631. It's the perm it's the temporary vinyl. It's not the permanent. I think the permanent is 651. Um, you want the 631. Okay, that's the that's what I found is works the best for me. I mean, you can try other stuff. This stuff's pretty cheap. I got this whole roll on Amazon for like 15 bucks. So I'll get a shit ton, excuse me, I'll get a ton of stencils out of this. All right, just doing six by six pieces. I just slice it off on six by six. I got a little cutter, a little vinyl cutter, and I just slice them off in squares. And I just make stuff fit in there, get as many as I can. You can actually do a half one if you only want to do a three by three. You know, that's fine too. You can do a three by three. I think six by six gives a little more, makes sure it stays on the board. Um, so, next step is we got to weed it out. Now, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me pick all these little ones out, but I'm going to show you. I'll do the. The stripes just to show you the process because it's going to take me a minute to pick all them little specks out of there but once they're out you know here's here's one the crawl got coming up it's a little different crawl um but i'll just give you the um the rundown here real quick on how to do it because i, I apologize for this video being long um, but i want to make sure i get through all the steps for you you got some tools that come with the cricket and uh you just kind of catch on these things right here and they come right out and you got tweezers too you want to make sure you get them all out of there and off off because uh they will stick to your lure um and then you have to pick them off of your lure if there's any little specks and i usually do this up close i'm doing it with the camera in front of me so i apologize if it takes me a second here because i can't see to get a hold of it but anyway, you just go through here and get all these out. Pick them all out. I keep bumping the camera, I'm sorry. Just go through here and pick them all out. If I move to the side. Pull them all off of there. It's that easy, guys. It's that easy to make a stencil. So, I think this will be a two-part video. We'll paint it in the next video. I'll paint it tomorrow using the stencil once I get it all cleaned out. Um, but, yeah, just cut them down to size. A little size to cover your bait. You can use the, li the eye to line it up. Um, pretty simple. I I really enjoy um, the creativity I can have by making the stencils like this and how flexible it is for me to be able to move it around and size it up and everything like that. Um, and it actually is, is it's actually a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it down, I'm just telling you, man, it's just, it's just the bee's knees for making stencils. Um, and it was actually my wife that came up with the idea because um, she had the cricket and she was like, well, can't you cut them out on the cricket? And I was like, oh, absolutely I can. So um, all credit goes to her for the idea because I was battling trying to make stencils and cutting index cards and using the blue tape and all that. And 
this is just so much more sharp it's crisp it sticks on the bait you don't have to worry about it holding it you don't have to worry about holding it down um, it takes a little bit a second or two to get it positioned but once you're positioned it, I mean it's you're there you're there and uh, and it sticks good and it don't bleed underneath of the stencil if you got it down pretty good so pulls and pulls a nice sharp stencil all right so I, again I apologize because this is kind of a long video guys but I wanted to make sure I touch on all the points and everything and uh, hope you get something good out of it hope you hope you uh, end up getting getting one or, or taking your wife's cricket away from her if she's already got one start using it um, it's just it's it's just going to save you so much time and give you a much more quality on your lures and stuff. Um, so I appreciate the support. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you made it this far, you, you know, you, you're obviously interested. So if you have any questions, comments, anything, you can always email me at admin at crusty cranks. It's in the description and, um, it, put a comment in there. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. And hit ring that notification bell so you get notified when we put up the next video. We'll be painting the bait next um, using that stencil we just cut. And uh, always remember, stay crusty, my friends.